Hi everyone! Mary at Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. <clears throat> Today we're going to do a project. Um, I hope you'll think it's a lot of fun. It's something I wanted to try for a while and um, it's based on something else but I kind of modified it to suit um, a different type of card making specifically journal cards so it's based on a style of card making called four-way tea cards they have all different kinds of names and basically you also can do something similar to do um, ATC cards and basically what you would do is stamp in a cross fashion okay, these are upside down I think no they're not sorry I cut this it's not proportional the way it's supposed to be actually they are upside down down, I think. Anyway, there we go. That's how it's supposed to be. And you stamp like that, usually with one or two stamps, one or two images, different colors, or first and second generation. And then you cut them apart. And then the beauty is, if you're making like a set of note cards or something, you can decide which way you like them to be. And then you put your sentiment. So I quickly stamped one five minutes before this and cut it apart and didn't do it proportionally. But that's what they're called and we're going to do something similar uh, this is my latest if you didn't see it this is just the um, uh, one page on presentation paper called my vintage Valentine there you go it's just a, a little ephemera collection so here are some of my samples and for size sake well I did most of mine on my watercolor card bases because I'll probably be putting them on little mini note cards but I also wanted to do this for journal making especially for people who can't decide or they're just beginning and they don't know how to um, create all the ephemera in a journal so this goes a lot faster than something like a master board but at the same time you can use the papers that you use in your journal you can use your scraps um, you can do two or three different sets like say you did three sets that's 12 cards that you can put in your journal um, another good thing about them um, if you wanted to turn this into a pocket it could be a pocket if you wanted to put something over it do a little cluster whatever you could do that you could turn them into a tag you could square them up and go corner to corner and you then you'll have a little corner tuck and this would keep however many you did cohesive throughout your journal you can mass make a bunch of these and um, there's another thing that's really cool about them, which I'll show you in a minute. And I even did some 
took some old uh, magazine, vintage magazine, um, and did it with a different type of theme. It would be, and I also did these ones and I just cut them apart a different size. So it would be really cool if you use certain magazine images. And then another one I did, I didn't cut this apart because I like it and I want to keep it like it is. And the second technique is just using scrap paper. So we're going to do both. And um, they're going to both be smaller. So you remember to scale this up to whatever size you want. Okay, so you're going to need your paper. Some things I have pre-done. You're going to need your paper to do your four-way, whatever size scale you want. For journal card, it would probably be like 9 by 10. Uh, then you would get 4.5 by 5 or 8.5 by 9. Then you would get 4 and a quarter by 4.5. That's kind of like typical journal card sizes. And then I'll leave these on top so that I can explain. So then you're going to need whatever you want for your motif. This one I just did torn paper pieces. Um, this one I just used a punch. You can use a punch. You can use leaves. Where did I put it? I was going to do some with this um, flower shaped die cut, which has smaller flowers. And I was actually going to do that today, but my I need new plates and they weren't poking out fast enough, so I gave up on that. So today my motif is going to be, I cut out a bunch of stamps. I was also going to try buttons. Um, but you just be, you can do little um, strips of paper. Washi tape would be cute. Just use your imagination, whatever you think you would like to put in the tea. I personally think this is super cute, especially for a junk journal. And then here's the other thing. If you, if you wanted this just for a base, and you wanted to do something else on it, instead of normally you would put a sentiment, um... You could put another little cluster on top there. You could put another little, um, you know, piece of ephemera. And it's just a background. But this way you have, you have, it's a mass make. You have four at a time already made. So I have this already done. You're going to need some glue. You're going to need your Sizzix to do the final um, technique. You're going to need a trimmer, at least a pair of scissors or a guillotine. I personally find a T-square helpful, which I'm not going to need because I already did my lines. And then you're going to divide that, as shown, into equal. The middle of the 
vertical line in the middle of the horizontal line. So let me just sort out some stamps here. And another thing, usually they use two different types of stamps. And on this one, I really thought another motif might be helpful, like little dots or something. I probably would have put two motifs. Try to incorporate two motifs. That's just a personal opinion. But since I don't have two today either, I'm just going to go with stamps. So I'm just going to, um, I really wanted to do buttons, but I don't think my buttons are large enough. And there wasn't enough contrasts. I didn't think they would show up well enough for you to see what I'm doing. So I hope you'll stick around for the second technique. I'm, I'm going to try to go as fast as I possibly can. Get this pressed and cut up so you can see. And if I don't do this perfectly, and I want to add something after I cut them, I can. And if you have a little pencil line showing after you, get your arrangement. Just erase it. Okay. Generally, Usually when they stamp, they kind of start in the middle, but I'm just going to go top to bottom, side to side. Sorry about the band-aid. I had my first guillotine mishap. I just scraped my finger along the blade. And I also, um, I'm going to save that for the side. I also uh, have one finger with super glue on it. Now this is kind of no think, but at the same time you want to pay attention to what is going to be being cut down the middle. And you also want to pay attention to what your background is. So I chose generally, I forgot to flip through my scrap paper here. I'll do that in a minute. So you can see what type of things I chose. My table is completely full here. I just chose scrapbook type papers. That had a pattern that wasn't overly in your face. And another one you might want to be mindful of is if you choose one with text. So these are just a few of my choices. Okay. Now on to the side.
And I'm also going to have, try to have at least one. I might cut up some of these tiny ones over here to my left so that I can at least pop one into my negative space since I don't have two motifs going here. So this goes faster than a master board, but it's um, still something similar, but at the same time different. Um, Pop a little one there into my negative space just so I make sure I have if it gets a strange cut off then I will be still having something nice If I have to stand up, and that's okay, you can go off the edge, just trim it off. I'm going to cut some of these tiny ones. And by the way, um, Dollar Tree finally did have. I think I went in there every few weeks from September looking for these pet trimmer scissors to do stamp edges and I must say they work very well. I wouldn't use it on a pet but <laughs> they make a very cute little edge. Okay, these stamps are from Love Letters, by the way. And there's, I think I want to alternate the color. So. Um, probably what a second motif I could have uh, punched out some postal stamps as in you know with the date punch those out with a circle but you just get creative and Try to think of what you would combine for background. Okay. Yeah. And that kind of popping in there just you know, because I don't know how this is going to cut apart. And pay attention, please, to my measurements. There's actually 
two that I didn't cut proportional. I'll show you the part about this that's really cool. So I hope everyone's having a great start to their new year. Mine has been busy. More busy than I would like. Two appointments. Hopefully I will be. My daughter got a pixie. Yesterday. So her hair is quite short. But she looks cute. She has the face shape that could pull off a pixie quite well. I don't, and I don't particularly like short hair, but it's her hair. And uh, I can no longer dictate. <laughs> well, I haven't been able to do that for quite some time what she wears or how many hairstyles she chooses. And I suppose it's just typical for a teenager every time she goes in. It's a completely different look. And she has beautiful hair, not like mine. Mine is straight as a stick. Okay, now for the fun part, and I'm probably going to stand up to do this. And then I will explain. So I'm going to run this through my um, Sizzix. And I'm using all three plates as if it was a die cut. And I'll show you. Hopefully I have enough room here to actually turn the wheel. And don't spill my coffee. <laughs> this is generally not where I keep my Sizzix. And I just made it. Okay. This is the cool part. So what this does, you're not going to be able to see it, but what this does is it presses all this into the paper so much that you can barely feel it. Okay? And it is so cool. <laughs> they virtually become one paper. That's also handy to do with your master boards and your tile making, by the way keeps everything secure and we're also going to do it with this one so there you go I'm going to cut that when I get to the second one so that's the first one and you can see I kind of went in my tea so the second one what I did Actually, I did two ways. I had three different pieces of paper. You can add as many as you want. And I just began, let me choose them here. Um, it really doesn't matter because what I, what I was going for is boho. My favorite styles. So, yeah, I was going to do this one because it has green. And 
then where did my stripe go? I'm gonna do my stripe. And then what? I think probably that one. Or I, I don't need four. I could cut one of those off and I would have enough room. So what I did, just pretend these are your chosen papers. You just want to make sure that you're going off the page. And I just Lined up my first one. Traced around it. And that's the only one you really need to worry about placing. I hope you're going to stick around till the end of this. Give that a little smudge because, as I said, I think I am going to refrain from using glue stick so much this year. Um, and I'm just going to do this one the way I did the first one. Let me just make sure this is going to work out. That I don't have to align it differently is what I'm saying. Okay. This one second. Or no, wait. If I do that, yeah, I'll do this one second. I don't know why I didn't do my crazy quilt like this crazy quilt card. <laughs> it would have been a lot easier. Well, I kind of know why, because I started with the five, the five inch piece in the center like a crazy quilt. But this is another, another thing on my list because I saw this boho pattern. fabric and I wanted to um, replicate the design. Okay. I know I'm probably going to do this wrong. And if you used, um, say you cut up a bunch of cards or something and you use the main image and you still have all your corner pieces, you could also use those. Just generally Generally, um, just stick with what you used in your journal. It's a good way to use up your scraps. 
and I actually had to print and cut some paper. My um, scrapbook stacks are actually getting quite low, and I only have two. It's kind of amazing to me. So, as you can see, I have a ton of Kind of waste here because uh, just get this off. I'll just go meter at the end. Maybe this means I can buy more paper. That particular one, um, this, this book is falling all apart. I can't even, I don't think I can even store it where it, all my other papers are anymore. I'm going to quickly run this through here just to get out my glue lumps. Don't want those showing. So that's great to do with that too. That pressed that beautifully. Okay, let's just trim this up. Where are we? 33. That's amazing. Yes, I'm going to keep these to 33. 30 minutes or so. 20 would be better. 15 would be ideal. Although I'm sure I could probably speed up my gluing my stamps. Maybe I will. Okay, that's still cool. I'm going to see this one here, and that also needs a little more glue already. I'll do that later. This one's a little cool, but we're going to cut it anyway. Okay, let me just remember what size it was. This is six by five. Okay. Two and a half by three. Let's see what we get. I don't think I've seen this done before for this particular function. Although I'm sure probably it has been done before because there's nothing new under the sun. Cute! Okay, now let me just them back together. Cute. Let me come up here and so you can try to... I know you're not going to be able to gauge how flat that is. Sorry about my finger that's super glued. <laughs> that was a that was an eyelet mishap when I was doing my Christmas ornaments. Um, yeah, those literally are one sheet of paper. So remember, if you want, you can turn those however you want. They can be a pocket. 
you can put something else there a little closer. They can be a tag. Just cut your page proportionally. <laughs> um, square it off, corner to corner. They can be a corner. And there you ha already have four journal cards. If you want to leave them all cards, fine. They'll slide down in a pocket. That's another thing. Yeah, they can be a pocket. Tall, sideways. And you already have four cohesive pieces quickly made. Let me see if this is dry yet. Let me just tack that little corner down. Press it again. Before I cut. I don't have any cutting. Cutting problems. And then you'll see this is going to come out a little crazy. So yeah, that's a great that's a great thing to do in general <laughs> for just if you want to quickly flatten something, plus make sure it's all nice and secure. Okay, glue off my hands. So this one is the same, and I can tell that one edge is a little needs trim six by five. so cool and again those can be do the same pocket tag corner journal card and they're all made from your papers that you use in your journal now let me put these back together two styles. Remember magazines would be cool, especially if you use the letters. You could use numbers. You could use letters. You could use torn bits. You can use punches. You can use dies. Just remember to keep in mind you're going to have a background paper and an image mo or a motif. Okay everyone, 40 minutes, that's too long, but maybe I can speed something up. Anyway, I hope you stay till the end. This is super fun. I'm going to do it again, definitely for the boho look that I want. To achieve similar to this one. Okay, have a great week everyone. I'll see you as soon as possible. Um, I don't know if it'll be the weekend or Monday, but 
we'll do something. See you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.